Okay, welcome everyone. <clears throat> Morning and welcome to Handy SEO Tips. Today's webinar I'm giving you some tips on optimising your website for search. I'm Jane and I'll be your digital coach today. Just a little housekeeping before we start. I have muted everyone so that your background noise doesn't um, distract everyone, otherwise it can get a bit distracting. And you can see a picture in front of you. You should have a control panel like this in front of you. Um, can you please just <clears throat> excuse me, raise your hand if you can hear me okay? Just let me know the volume's okay. Just click this little hand icon here so that I can see that everyone can hear. All right. Just a couple of hands going up. Okay, not very many. Is that better? Can everyone hear me okay? Just raise your hand if you can. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. Sorry. All right. Okay, good. Now, if you do have a question, I will um, do feel free to ask them at any time if you've got a question on what we're covering today. Um, you, will ha you have a little text box in your control panel where it says enter a question for staff here and you can just type your question in there and send it to me and I will pick it up. I'll get an alert that someone's asked a question. So feel free to ask questions as we go. If I don't get to answer your question during the webinar, if you can hold on at the end, I'm happy to do that then. But if you have to go, then I will definitely get back to you this afternoon um, with whatever your question is. So do feel free to ask as we go. All right, so let's get started. Just before we do start though, um, what I'm going to tell you today is kind of true today, <laughs> in as much as anyone can ever figure out search. I mean, Google obviously will not divulge or confirm anything definitely. Um, so everything that we talk about with search is what people have managed to understand through testing and reading search blogs and being experts in search. And so everything I'm going to tell you today is what we think is most likely to happen, but it does change a lot as well. Um, the Google algorithm, the Google search coding and algorithms do change, and so there won't be any guarantees into what I'm telling you. I'm sorry about that, but I know it can guarantee a search engine result. Um, so I will tell you, to the best of our knowledge, the collective search engine optimization community, what we think right now, but bear in mind that um, <clears throat> there aren't any guarantees and also it does change from time to time so it's important to keep on top of it and keep testing things and learning uh, yourself, testing and measuring how you're going and learning as you go. So with that disclaimer out of the way, let's talk about what we're going to talk about. So um, today I'm going to talk to you about what's important in search engine optimization. A little bit on writing good copy for SEO because copy is um, even more important than it ever was. Something on social, local and mobile searching. Um, checking your website for SEO and lastly staying up to date with SEO trends and information. So first of all to start defining SEO, what do we mean when we're talking about search engine optimization? So let's just click through and have a look here. So what I mean by SEO, in case you're not familiar with it, is this part of the screen here, okay? So um, normally if you do a search, you would might come up with some ads here. At the moment, these ads are on the side. Sometimes you get them up the top here. This is not SEO, this is paid. Okay, people have paid money to get here. This is not SEO either, strictly speaking. It is Google Plus or Google Places listings. So is this, so all this section here where you've got the little red balloons, that's Google Plus or Google Places listings. That's not what I'm talking about today, although I will refer to it as we go. This is what I mean by search engine optimization, and this is the part that is in inverted commas free. It's really not free because it takes a fair amount of effort and time to get there, but you don't pay for it. You can't buy it. Um, you achieve it through the sweat of your brow, I'm afraid. So, but anyway, this is what I'm talking about here. The bit that is below any ads and um, below Google Places or Google Plus listings, just to define that. So Google looks at many elements um, to do with the site, the page, um, many, many things. Um, but from what we gather, the three most important elements to look at in search engine optimization is firstly your site structure, how your site is built and coded. Secondly, the content, freshness and relevance to the user's query. How fresh is the content and how relevant is it to the search query that someone's typed into Google? And lastly, backlinks into the site. How many and what quality are the links into the site. So those are the three things I'm going to talk about mainly today. Your site structure and coding, your content freshness and relevance to the user's query, and backlinks that come into your site from other sites. Not you linking out, but um, site links coming into you. Those are the three things. So let's look at the first one, site structure and coding. <clears throat> first thing to think about when you are building your site is to build it in HTML preferably. 
not in Flash, which is, if you're not familiar with Flash, it's a very nice animation program and it often powers those beautiful image sliders that we can see on people's home pages. Um, anything that kind of moves around on the page or does things automatically without you clicking on it, that's often built in Flash. Um, Silverlight is a Microsoft um, product that again allows for very rich content, very interesting animations and movies and various other things. But both Flash and Silverlight are not text-based. And the trouble with um, the thing about Google is the the bots, the Google bots, which are the um, machines that crawl the web every day looking for sites and indexing them and making sure they get found and things when, or you know, making them available to be found when someone searches, they only read text. So they can't read Flash or Silverlight or other non text platforms, they only read text. And HTML, which is the name of the language that your site is normally built in, the name of the code. Um, <coughs> HTML is in text and so if you want your site to be seen by Google it needs to be built in text HTML that doesn't mean you can't have images or videos there's ways to treat it um, so that they can be found but the main thing to remember is the site needs to be built preferably in HTML so that Google bots can actually see it because they can't see flash and they can't see silverlight and all the effort you might have put into optimizing a wonderful flash site is wasted because they can't read it <coughs> The other thing to think, so that's the first thing to think of. If you are refreshing your site, building a new one, or want to check your own site, <clears throat> just check that it is actually built in HTML, hypertext markup language. The other thing, um, one of the other things to know is a sitemap is basically a list of all the pages in your site. Um, normally in hierarchy, something like this, although it might look like a list of links down the page, but. Um, and it is basically a list of everything in your site, whether or not it's published. Um, you can build this within your content management system. Some CMSs allow you to do it. Or you can use a tool such as Sitemap Writer, which will basically spider all the pages in your site and put it into a sitemap for you. Um, or you can get your developer to do it. But the important thing to know is that put a sitemap in your site that lists all of the pages in the site. Make sure it is what is called an XML sitemap, XML, because an XML sitemap basically pushes information out to Google and raises a little flag and says, hey, there's new content here, come and have a look. If your site is not an XML sitemap, if it's just a list of links, there's less chance of that happening. So a sitemap is very important. An XML sitemap is the best kind. You can build it within your CMS with, within some of them or use a tool like this one, Sitemap Writer, or ask your developers to do it, but make sure it's an XML sitemap. And it may look something like this. So you'd have your home page and then below your home you'd have your products and then you might have product one, product two and you know any number of products. And then below here more information on each one and so on. And you might have an about page with our people, our story, and you might have a contact page, a location page. So this would be all the pages in your site that go to make up your site map. Um, it's important to include all pages that you want Google to see. Sometimes I review websites and I see that the um, the page that I'm going to or the page that I land on, I've only been able to get there through a link in the actual text on the page, not through a link in the sitemap or the site navigation. And that makes it much harder for Googlebots to find that page and read the content and see what it's about. So um, make sure that all pages are included in your sitemap, that you have one, that it's linked, because what happens is the Googlebot will land on your site and sitemap is the easiest way for it to find all of the pages that you have. And it will basically crawl down your sitemap, following every link, following every navigation item, and just checking out the content that's on your page and kind of registering what kind of content it is. And so obviously, if it's too hard for it to link to your pages, it's not going to be able to find them because it's a machine, not a human. It's not going to be able to actually see the site. It's only following links. So sitemap, really important. You can build it yourself, get your developer to do it, and make sure that you include all the pages that you want Google to see. So that was a bit technical, but um, as a rule of thumb, build your site in HTML, have an XML sitemap, and include all of your pages so that you know um, Googlebots can find them easily. Another thing to think about, another slightly technical thing, but it's not hard. Um, this is called a title tag, and this is in your site code. So you can see here that I've got a little snippet of code here. This is just a little piece of code from the top of the home page of um, a site I've been looking at lately with Sunday Sailing Club. And um, your site will have this as well. It's not difficult to find. If you just right click and go view source, you can find it. Um, so yeah, your site will have this as well. And not 
all these title tags here. This is a title tag. So I've got this purple title. And these are the words, and this is, tells it to stop the title tag. These aren't always filled in. Frequently on people's sites, I see there's nothing here. Okay, so it's a no-brainer to, and it's not difficult to do. There's various ways of doing it. If you have control, if you can get to your site code, you can do it yourself. You can ask your developer to do it. Some CMSs will let you do it. Um, they'll have a, a field in a form that you can just fill in. Um, ask your developer is probably the easiest way, or we can coach you through it if you're not sure how to do this. But just put in the name of the page. So we've got home, because this is the title tag for the home page, with Sunday Sailing Club. I might just show you a live example. It's probably easier if I do you can understand what I mean. So always easier to see something than to have me talk about it. So here's our lovely website. And then all I do is hold my mouse over the page, right click, Okay, and you see these options come up. I just go view page source, and there's all the code for that page. Okay, it looks a bit daunting, but it's not scary. Um, and you can see that's our title tag here. So go to your own, um, maybe test your own site uh, when you're done. Just go to your one of your pages, do a right click, and pull up the code, and look for the word title and it's normally close to the top here so it shouldn't be too hard to find. So make sure that you have um, each of your page names in each, so each, each of your page names has a title tag and obviously it will be different for each page because each page is called something different. So we have home, racing, sailing, cruising, sailing, dining and social, marine training. So when I go to these pages these title tags will be dining and social with Sunday Sailing Club, marine training with Sunday Sailing Club cruising sailing with Sunday Sailing Club. So just make sure, have a look at your site and make sure that your title tags are all filled in. Um, preferably make it reflect the name of the page because that, that is uh, better usability and stronger. Um, but yes, just make sure your title tags have data in them and aren't empty because frequently I see title nothing in title which is, you know, not a good thing. It's not a huge thing with SEO but it all helps. It's one of the things that can help. Similarly, description tags. So um, this is again just normally just below the title tag. Okay. So I don't think they have them. Somewhere in here will be a description tag and often they are kind of here. Description equals something. Um, so what this company has done is just written a nice little description of who they are and what they do. Rent-a-home offers a wide range of holiday and corporate accommodation listed by property managers, owners for short or long stay, check availability and book securely online. And that stuff they've written here in their page appears here when someone searches. So Rent-a-home offers a wide range of holiday and corporation accommodation um, listed, listed by property managers and owners for short or long stay. So that line of text here has appeared here, if that makes sense. And what this does, it doesn't hugely help your SEO, but it doesn't hurt to do it because it will help a little bit, but also it may entice a user who's reading a nice description here on their search engine results page. They've typed Sunshine Coast accommodation into Google. This site has come up. Here's their description. It might entice them to click through. So two things to do, title tags, description tags. Another thing to avoid when you're coding up your site or working on your site is what we call duplicate content. So Google uh, normally penalises sites if they have pages that are duplicated on the site. You don't want to have two pages exactly the same, avoid it. I think this would be rare with most of our um, people listening today, but just in case, um, don't have the same content, you can see this is the same, on the same page. If you do have to have it for some reason, like it's content that applies to many products or something, um, you can use what's called a robots command, no index. And no index says to the Googlebot, hey Googlebot, just ignore this page. And so they'll only visit one of the pages and not two. They won't see the page that is no indexed. So if this one's a no index, they won't see it. They'll only see this one. And um, that just gives a command to the Googlebot not to look at this page because you don't want them to um, 
see that you have duplicate content, if that makes sense. So the tag is meta name equals robots and the content equals no index. Now again, your developer can do this for you. We're more than happy to coach you through it. Um, experiment with it if you want to and just, um, just see how you go. But duplicate content, avoid it if you can. If you do have to have it on the site for whatever reason, put in a no index tag into that HTML that we just saw, into that site coding um, site code and, uh, and you should be fine. And friendly URLs is the other thing to think about, again, with the technical parts of your site. So some websites have been built in a programming language called PHP, which is fine. PHP is fine for building. And then um, translate HTML. But sometimes what happens is um, the URL is a series of question marks and strange characters and you know things that and this is basically because it's been built in PHP. Now Google bots are looking for words to match. Okay, so when someone types in a keyword like Mia Mia Bed and Breakfast, hopefully they've typed that in, Google will come to this site and many others looking for those words to match it. And of course this isn't a word. So um, it can't match a code string with the search query. So therefore it's much less likely that your page with the code string it will get found on Google. So these are called friendly URLs. By friendly we mean use words not code strings. And it's perfectly possible to do this. Your developer can do it. Um, translate a PHP URL like this one into one that has real words in it that a Googlebot can read, um, in inverted commas, and match to the search query, if that makes sense. So if you if your site has these kind of URLs, ask your developer, or find um, if you do it yourself, find out how to translate it into something like this that has real wor words in it and finish with finishes with preferably HTM or HTML. I hope that makes sense. So friendly URLs are important as well. <clears throat> so in summary, that was very technical to hit you with early on, but anyway, site should be coded in HTML. Avoid things like Flash or Silverlight or other platforms that are very visual and beautiful but don't generate um, text. Make sure you have a sitemap. Make sure it's an XML sitemap. Avoid having duplicate content. If it's absolutely unavoidable, use a robots.txt command to tell the Google not Googlebot not to look at the duplicate page. Metadata tags, title and description tags, and friendly URLs composed of words, not a series of codes. Okay, so that's the technical part of it. That's your site coding and site structure. Let's move into site content now. So this is a little infographic that kind of encapsulates pretty well what it used to be like, what SEO used to be like, which you might be more familiar with, and what, according to what we read, it's like now. Um, over here, uh, used to be technical that SEO consisted of basically coding up your site and writing your content for a Google bot, not for a user. And so you would see um, pages that had clearly been written with keyword stuffing in them with lots and lots of keywords that were kind of okay to make sense, but they weren't very nice to read. Um, and also there would be things like people, uh, they would build links with just anybody at all, um, or go to what's called link farms, um, when which were just basically lists of links, um, and they would get them to link into the site, didn't matter about the quality or what kind of site it was or anything like that. Um, content farms, just articles and articles and articles just going out everywhere. So um, all designed to try and trick the Googlebot into ranking your site highly, um, old-fashioned SEO. So if you've got any of that sort of stuff going on with your site at the moment, it might be a good idea to have a look at it because um, this update here and a series of other updates here when Google updated their algorithm meant that this kind of SEO, which was basically about keyword stuffing and links and a few other things, um, didn't work. And many companies found that their rankings dropped very substantially overnight when this algorithm and some of the others came into play. And so what um, SEO is more about now, from what we gather, is more about delivering content that is fresh i.e. don't let it all sit there for six months, try and update your site regularly, um, that is useful, helpful and entertaining. So the old days of putting keywords throughout your copy are kind of gone. You do need to have keywords in there, but um, the more important thing is that your content is kind of written for the user rather than from the Google, Google bot and is useful and helpful and entertaining and preferably unique kind of content as well. 
Um, yeah, optimize for the user, not the search engine. Engage your audience with two-way conversations in social media and earn your marketplace's undivided attention through online PR. So obviously we're busy and we're small organizations. So we may, have, may not have time to do all of these things, but the most important thing to remember is that content that is useful, helpful, entertaining and fresh is really going to help your SEO a lot more than a, um, a keyword stuffed page, which you may have had from the old days of SEO. So let's have a look at that in a little bit more detail. So fresh content, I mean regularly updated. And the easiest way to do this is with um, a blog, basically, that might have articles or short posts in it. Um, People always ask me how often should we update and I always say as regularly as you can, at least monthly, um, preferably weekly if you can, but um, I know that this isn't always possible. Sorry, excuse me, that's just my virus protection having a moment. Okay, so regularly updated articles, blog posts. Um, you know, rather than trying to update pages on your site where there may be no reason to, a blog is kind of very easy to update because you can just write about what's happening this week or, you know, something that you experienced yesterday and it's good um, fodder. Plus, it's interesting. Um, now, your text should contain keywords, words that you are trying to be found for on Google, which might be your um, location, your city, your product, like accommodation or tours, whale watching. So your text should contain those keywords, but avoid keyword stuffing. Don't have them in there too many times and make, don't um, put your keywords in at the expense of writing nice readable copy. Interesting, valuable content that people want to link to is the key because if your content is interesting and valuable, then it's likely that other bloggers and other sites and, um, you know, Overseas sites may be looking for what Australia's really like, that sort of thing, may link to you and, and that's what we want. We want backlinks as many as possible from quality sites. So interesting content that people want to link to is great. And the other hint here is to cover all the Google products off. It's more engaging for the user and helpful for search. So what do I mean by all of that? So good SEO copy. Your heading. Your body copy, that is the main article, and your link text contains some keywords but not um, stuffed with them. And the reason why I say this is here's an example. If we search for the words click here, you'll notice that Adobe normally comes up top. ABC IBC sort of pipped them today, probably because I just visited them the other day and that's to do with me being logged in. But Adobe normally comes up when I'm logged out first. And why would that be for the words click here? Because most sites in the world have um, a PDF or a flash file or something that requires Adobe Reader or an Adobe product in order for them to work. And so most sites in the world say, this document requires Adobe Reader, click here to download it, and they link to Adobe. So hence the importance of keywords in your link, but also right for the user at the same time. One or two words on the page, not lots, I would go for one or two or three keywords um, I would optimize for. Alt tags and captions for videos and pictures. So make sure that if you do have videos, that's absolutely fine, but you can write a little caption underneath it saying maybe what the video was about. And again, it's fine to have a keyword in there if it fits naturally. I wouldn't stuff it in there and make it an awkward title. And metadata, title description, as we said. So this is good SEO copy. So it should contain some keywords, but it should be valuable and interesting as well. So we're writing for the user and incidentally including keywords as we go. We need keywords in there for the Googlebot to find you, but we want copy that's interesting and enticing and that people will link to. So um, this is the essence of good SEO copy. Do it regularly too. So keyword stuffing, don't do this, okay, this is old SEO, um, clearly this, this uh, page has been optimised in the old fashioned view for the word fire pits and you can see it's stuffed throughout this whole article and while that might have worked um, some time ago in the old days of SEO, it really doesn't work that well today and also it's not very nice copy, um, so it's unlikely that people would pay a lot of attention to it or like it or link to it, which is what we want at the end of the day. So to change this to new, it's fine to have it in here and I would have it maybe once or twice or three times throughout the page, up the top if it fits, but it doesn't really matter anymore. But I certainly wouldn't have it as many times as he's got it here because it's really hard to read and difficult and it looks like it's been optimised for SEO. So avoid this, um, yes, maybe, Maybe, that sort of thing. So avoid keyword stuffing. 
and I mentioned earlier cover all the bases. So um, Google has a number of different products and if you are in all of them, as many as you have time and uh, resources for, you've got more, much more likely to be found with SEO. So text search, we just talked about text content, but um, YouTube also, if you have the uh, ability and inclination to put up some YouTube videos as well and put them on your Google Plus page or you may even have a channel. YouTube is also a Google product. Google owns YouTube so that will be indexed. Um, Google image search so make sure your images are tagged up with your company name or you know whatever you're wanting to rank for. A Google Plus page and a Google Places listing. So cover all the bases. Make sure you have a Places listing. Try and have a Google Plus page. Put um you know make sure you're in image search. Try and put a video or um, a couple of videos up there and optimize for text as well. And the reason why I say that is if we go through to this one here, say I've searched for whale watching Gold Coast, I've put in a search that says whale watch Gold Coast. So here there is a website and here there is a website of someone who has a Google Plus page called Whales in Paradise and there he is again and here is his Google places Google Plus listing um, and here are all the other people with Google Places or Plus listings and then we also have TripAdvisor so TripAdvisor gets indexed on Google on the front page as well and um, then a number of other websites as well and finally down the bottom we have a paid ad so you can see that there are a number of different ways that people can find you if they put in whale watching Gold Coast there's a website with a Google Plus page there's a website anyway there's a Google Plus places listing there's a TripAdvisor review so cover all the bases is what I need what I mean as, as many as you have time for um, because you could get to the point where you could you know have a very strong presence on the front page of Google if not via your website then certainly via your Google Plus page and or your TripAdvisor recommendations or even something like Wikipedia. Now I know that we're often strapped for resources and we're small businesses so my advice is just cover the bases for um, the things that you have time to do but over time try and uh, be found out there because and don't just rely on your um, site content because there are many ways that you can just tweak things a bit and as you can see like the um, whales in paradise you can have quite a strong presence on the front page of Google for the words that you're trying to rank for whale watching Gold Coast for example so I hope that makes sense So relevant fresh content written for the user, in summary, no keyword stuffing, have one or two or three keywords in there, but don't stuff it as we saw with the fire pit example, and cover all the bases, have your content in as many platforms as you have time to do well. And the last thing with um, of the three that I talked about, so we've talked about the technical aspects of site coding, we've talked about your site content, Mac links, so um, links into your site links into your site from quality sites is what we're after here. By quality, I mean sites that have high traffic and sites that are relevant to you. So um, we don't want to be having links in from sites that uh, have been sitting there for a year and not been updated, that have quite low traffic that isn't climbing, it's fine if it's climbing, um, or that have nothing whatever to do to our business. Those sorts of things will not help at all um, with Google bot rankings and may even uh, lower your ranking. So um, links in from high traffic and relevant sites are the best thing you can do. So you might say how on earth will I know who's linking to me? Okay so there are a couple of tools that you can use in order to find out who is linking, linking to your site. One of them is called SEMrush and this is their logo here, SEMrush. Another one is called Alexa and this is their logo here. Um, and there is both a free and a paid option with SEMrush. Um, so let's just have a look at SEMrush and I'll show you what I mean. Just close a few of these windows because otherwise we're going to get overwhelmed. Bear with me a sec. Okay, so this is SEMrush, SEMrush.com is the URL, quite easy to remember. If you can't remember it, just Google them, you'll be able to find them. And what I have done, I've gone to the homepage of SEMrush and I've typed in just telstra.com.au. So you could type in any URL here, your own site, your competitor sites, either, whatever you like. 
I've just selected Australia from the drop down here because I'm interested in Australian results. Okay, so I've typed in telstra.com.au, selected Australia, and I've hit search, and a whole huge amount of information comes up about the telstra.com.au domain um, rankings and traffic and organic keywords and all sorts of stuff that is useful but not relevant to exactly what I'm talking to you about today. Um, you can see all sorts of good things you can explore area of time. But the main thing I'm interested in is this tag here that says backlinks. Okay, so this is going to give me a list of the sites that are linking into telstra.com.au. So you could put your own site URL in here, have a look at domain. So click on domain and it will come up with a report of firstly how many backlinks we have in total. That doesn't surprise me because it's a very big site and how many domains are referring traffic to. And these is this is a list of the um, sites that are linking into the domain kelsey.com.au. So Kempsey Council Library from here is linking to here. They must have something about seniors. I'm not quite sure what that would be. But anyway, that's a link into that Telstra domain. Um, update, this is, is a, looks like a news article. Yeah, ibtimes.com. It's an article on Android. And so that is linking to Telstra as well. There's a, an ad for BlackBerry, it looks like. I'm not quite sure. So you can obviously click on these and find out what the sites are. But you can do this with your own site and get some information on who is linking into you. Are they good sites? Are they high quality, high traffic sites? Are they ones that look a bit dodgy like link farms or strange sites that you don't know anything about or things that are not relevant to your business at all? So something that is completely unrelated to tourism. Those are the ones that you don't want to have. Um, yeah, so if you do find yourself in that situation, um, best thing to do would be to politely ask them to stop linking to you because that's about all you can do. But at least you can get an idea firstly of how many links you have in and if it's only two or three you might want to increase that. Um, and secondly who is linking to you, are they relevant um, and are they fresh links. This is all free Okay, so I've just got this on a free SEM Rush article. You notice that as I scroll down the page it says upgrade to view more. So if I wanted to see all 98 Point seven thousand total backlinks. I would have to buy a subscription to SEM Rush, but it's not that expensive. I think it's about thirty dollars or something for a month. And so uh, consider that as opposed to the cost of advertising, you might want to consider just buying a subscription for a little while, finding out all these sites that are linking to your site if there are kind of more down here, and um, then working on what we call a backlink strategy. Okay, so this is one tool. Alexa does something very similar, alexa.com, but SEM Rush I like because it's um, just clearer, but Alexa is good too. Um, so once you know who is linking to you and if they're good quality sites and you want to keep them or if you haven't got very many, then I would follow what's called a uh, backlink strategy. Um, so you could look, for example, for businesses that are complementary to yours that you might already have a relationship with, maybe suppliers or um, people that you do partnerships with in other ways. Um, have they linked to you? If not, would you consider approaching them and asking them if they will link from uh, their site to yours, using uh, preferably using keywords in the links that you're trying to rank for, like Sunshine Coast Accommodation or something, or the name of your business or whatever. So we can that is called a link exchange. Okay, so that's one of the things that you can do. One of the other things you can do is um, if you you know consider sending uh, articles to other quality sites that it will accept articles with a link back to your URL. So we can talk to complementary businesses and do a few other things. But you can also, um, if you're in the habit of writing articles and you know you're good at it and you would be able to approach um, sites, you can send them out a uh, link back to your own domain and that can be really helpful in uh, obviously because that's linking from a high quality high traffic site back to your site but backlinks can be really really important or you know from what we read are really important in uh, increasing your search engine optimization rankings some other things to think about so I've talked about coding up your site so Google bots can read it making sure you have fresh quality content written for the user and not keyword stuffing but having keywords in there and backlinks into your site. So there's a couple of other things to think about that kind of relate to these three things but I've treated them a little bit separately um, otherwise it all gets a bit too complex. So other considerations, social media and its relationship to search, local search, what we mean by local search and mobile search, people searching on tablets or phones. So. Firstly, social media and search. So links from social media sites such as Facebook, Twitter, TripAdvisor, blogs, others, 
can be helpful, if not in increasing your ranking, certainly as we saw with the um, Paradise Whale Watch site, at least getting you found um, high up on Google. You remember that there was a TripAdvisor link and Facebook pages are also indexed by Google now. So linking through to your site, if you have a, um, a platform, a page on any of these platforms or any other social media platforms, um, can also help both with rankings and also with covering all the bases. So that's one thing that can help. Um, comments mentioning your site location and product can also help because you know they may come up if someone searches a specific set of keywords in Google and it's in someone's review, that may also come up for you. So that can really help. In general, a buzz in social media will help rankers, as we saw with that earlier infographic. If people are talking about you and more importantly talking to you on social media, it will create more of a buzz. You're more likely to be searched for, you're more likely to be found, you're more likely to come up in search results because there's more stuff being written about your site and your product. So in general, if you have kind of a robust social media presence where you're having good conversations with people online, um, responding to reviews and responding to queries and conversations and, you know, encouraging the conversation, that sort of thing. Um, it should just in general help your rankings. Google Plus is another one to think about. Um, Google Places and Google Plus listings are really good to think about and I'll come back to that in a minute. TripAdvisor, we saw with um, the Whale Watch Paradise one that hit some TripAdvisor reviews and rankings were coming up. So it would be um, possibly a good idea to rank if you're wanting to rank in search to make sure that your reviews are as positive as you can get them um, in, the, you know, in the way that you're supposed to do it obviously. But good Rankings of good reviews and lots of reviews on TripAdvisor can also help. And another thing to think about, speaking of social media, is YouTube is actually the second last largest search engine in the world. So people do go to Google to search by text or image or whatever, but they also go to YouTube and treat it as a search engine too. Particularly people that are not that comfortable with text may go to YouTube to find videos on a particular subject and will treat it just the same as a search engine. So um, there is something to think about with your um, YouTube presence if you don't have one perhaps build that into your plans for the future if you do have one make sure that your description and title have keywords in it that you're looking to rank for so that you can get found more easily than, than not so something else to think about as well so that's search and social media and a little bit on mobile search so we did have a workshop yesterday where um, a particular attendee said he has kind of two types of people looking for him. He has the group of people that are sitting in front of their desktop planning their holiday in advance, planning it all out and they want time and they're using a desktop search with Google So, and they take quite a bit of time and they do it well in advance and they book well in advance which is kind of one group but then he also has another group of users who just kind of land in the town, get out their phone and look for accommodation and that is growing that is growing from everything we can see. Um, so it is good to take account of that and not ignore it because I think it will, you know, all the predictions are that mobile searches will continue to grow, um, mobile local searches will continue to grow. So how is a search on a phone, for example, different to a search on a desktop? Well, users are usually more impatient and want an answer straight away not really prepared to go hunting. The screen is a lot smaller, it's harder to read. So they're more impatient, want an answer now. And obviously they're often on a phone. So it's a good idea to have your phone number there. So people can just search for you, find you and call you. And it's usually, speci it's often specifically a local search. Um, so I searched Sunshine Coast Accommodation and this is an ad and what if has come up first. Um, some other things why it's, uh, how it's different is that this is a very small screen and people will have to scroll a long way. And so if we scroll down below what if, this is the next thing we would have seen which is our Google Plus, Google Places listings. So if you don't have a Google Places listing, it's kind of a no-brainer um, to go and get one really quickly. It's free, it's not hard to do. All you need to do is put in your name, your address and um, a few other details and have that validated by Google and you've got one. Um, I presume that most of us listening today do have, but if you don't, you can see that this comes first, this comes second, this comes third, and if someone's search searching on a phone, this is a Google Places listing, there is a call button here, and they can just click that and call you straight away. Whereas um, if you don't have that, and they've got to go down to find your website, and, and try and find your contact page, and try and find your phone number using a small uh, touch screen phone, that's a lot harder to do and they're, as I said, a lot more impatient, they're less likely to do that. So make sure you do have a places listing at the very least so that you'll come up 
firstly high in the search engine results, but secondly there's a call button here so people can just call you straight away. And as I said, why it's important, volumes are increasing. So take account of the people who just land in your area and look for you. Um, make sure that you are also optimised for this kind of mobile search behaviour with a Google Places listing. Local search, so there's a very strong relationship, social, local, mobile. Um, so uh, local search is also increasing and it's often, um, sometimes local search can be an easier way to get found than to compete with much bigger companies. If you're um, optimising for a local search area, um, that can be often much easier and possibly more successful than going head to head with someone like what if or booking.com or someone like that. So some of the things that you can do to get found in a local search, by local search we mean a suburb or a place name or a you know, local area kind of thing. Um, list your business in quality directories, not dodgy ones that you know are a bit have been don't have many listings or you know aren't very well attended or don't have much traffic. Um, so ones like True Local, Gumtree, um, industry or member directories, any opportunities to list in those with your URL can be a really good way of getting found in a local search. Google Places listing, as I've said, is really important for local search um, and preferably a Google Plus page as well. Um, and also make sure that your keywords in your site content include location words like your suburb, your area, if the area is like to be searched on, that sort of thing, so you'll come up for that. So Google Places, Google Plus, I've touched on this a little bit, but let's have a little closer look at it. So Google Places is this one here, okay, and it's just simply an address and um, maybe directions and maybe a link to your website. So that's very simple and you can apply for that yourself just by putting um, your address in and getting it validated by Google. Google Plus, um, probably easier if I show you a live example again. Just give it a minute. Here we go. So I've searched, I've come here and I've searched Sunshine Coast Accommodation. These are paid, okay. Um, this is what we're talking about here. So this is Google Play, this is where Google Places and Google Plus listings will appear. And you notice that they are always just below the paid ones and above the organic ones. They're always here. So they're the next thing that people see after they see the things that people have paid money for. So this is free. Okay, they haven't paid money to be here. This costs, all right. Um, this is also free, but it's this is much higher up the page, as you can see, much higher up the search results page. So Google Places, Google Plus listings appear here. This is Google Places. This is a Google Plus. This is Google Places. This is Google Plus. And you can see as I'm mousing over these, it's starting to get some photos in. This is Google Places. This is Google Plus. Can you see the difference in this top right hand corner here? Something that just has a places listing. Um, like, where were we? A core. Um, yeah, we have a photo and a map. Photo and a map. Photo and a map. And obviously we can click through here and um, and find, you know, we can click through here and find a map to the page. But um, what uh, there is a relationship between Google Places and Google Plus. If you have a Google Places listing and you have that registered, you will probably have automatically been given a Google Plus page from Google that will just probably have your company name and address details in it. And the thing to do is to go to that Google Plus page, claim it, see if they've done this. Yeah, this one I think is unclaimed by the look. Yeah. So if it were me, I would be claiming this page, which is a process that Google can step you through, and putting in a lot more information into it. Um, so if someone searches Accommodation Brisbane and you have a Google Plus listing or Google Places listing, you're more likely to get found, as we saw, you get found up the top. It's usually displayed above the organic results, as we saw. And I would claim that page and put in, at the very least, your obviously business name will already be there in address, but your phone number. Encourage people to review you on your Google Plus page. 
put in photos and videos to engage new customers and any other relevant information like your opening hours, your menus, your phone number, any other relevant information. Now Google Plus is a little bit easier to manage than Facebook in that it's a bit less about conversations with people. Um, I wouldn't put it up and completely leave it but you can you don't have to maintain it as often as you do Facebook and as we just saw with that search engine result page Google Places and preferably Google Plus will rank higher than organic keywords so if you want to get found on page one of Google um, I would recommend that you have both of these in place as well. So that's um, everything on what you can do. Just a little bit now before we close on finding keywords. So um, people say to me, I don't even know what keywords to start with. So if we are just starting with our SEO, I'm not sure how far down the track we all are, but if we're just starting with SEO and you're not sure, I would just sit down and write a list of the 10 words or 15 at the most that you think people are most likely to be searching for you on Google, which was most, most likely to be um, your product, like such on coast accommodation, maybe your town like Malula Bar accommodation, maybe your um, the name of your business, um, or if you have something like a tour, you know, whale watching uh, Brisbane or best whale watching Brisbane, any of those kind of things. I just jot down maybe about ten words um, to start with. Unfortunately, you used to be able to get keywords from your Google Analytics on your website. They are no longer doing that anymore, so it's no longer a source of data, unfortunately. But again, you can get them from SEM Rush or Alexa. You can start with suggestions here. So, let's go back to my Telstra example. This is the main page. So our main page, I've typed in tosta.com.au, I've hit search, it's just generating the report now. Just bear with me, there we go. So here is a sum, you know, the, the top five organic keywords that you are appearing for now. Um, so if uh, if they're not if the ones that you have in there are not here, maybe there needs to be a little bit of work done on those keywords. But it will also give you a full report of words that you may or may not have considered trying to rank for. So that's one of the ways that you can find. We go or down the side here. And again, this is freemium. So this you get for free. This you get for paid. So that's one way you can find out. Uh, you can also use something like just the plain Google search. Oh which tends to predict words as you go. Um, so I'm here, if I go um, so if I start to go, say, rainforest oh, it's not doing it for me Still not doing it. Try it on Firefox. Okay, there we go. Um, so I'm starting to write rainforest here, and you can see that as I'm typing, it is suggesting search terms here, and as I keep typing, they keep changing. So you can look through this whole thing and see if there are any relevant ones. Um, um, what else could we use? Um, markets maybe. Markets Melbourne, Markets Today, Markets Morning Connection. So that gives me an indication that the term market plus a suburb is probably good. Um, maybe if I go Okay, so there's a whole bunch of suggestions here as well for the Tony Money. So, you know, you can just type in a term and see if any relevant suggestions come up here to give you a place to start if you're not sure where to start here too. Um, other things we can do to find keywords. Um, Google Trends is a tool that we can use from time to time. I use this one a fair bit to demonstrate. Right. 
Okay, so say I would put in a search term here that I wanted to find out a bit more about like weddings, so that's my business. And just give it a minute. Okay, and what it's given me there is a graph, if you like. These are the searches that have people have typed into Google for the term weddings since 2005, 2013. Okay, and you can see the term is actually trending down, which is interesting. But why I'm showing it to you is um, it will often suggest terms here as well. And so we've got wedding, we've got dresses, beach weddings, wedding venue, wedding dresses for wedding, dresses for wedding. So again, if you're not sure where to start, this can be a really good place to start generating some interesting ideas for um, this, the keyword weddings. And the other one I wanted to show you is the keyword planner tool. Once, uh, what I would do is go through these ones first, that gives you only a couple of words to choose from. Write your own list, use SEM, Rush or Alexa, which does the same thing. Predictive search, as we saw, maybe Google Trends. And once you kind of had a list that you kind of instinctively were pretty happy with, then I would go to the keyword tool in Google. And the best way to find it, to be honest, is to Google the words Google keyword tool. Um, and go search for new keyword and ad group ideas. And I could put in here weddings oops, um, for one of the, you know, just as an example. And you can put in a whole bunch of information as well and uh, set these filters and hit get ideas. And what it will do is present to me um, keywords like the one I've just typed in, for example. Wedding venues, Brisbane wedding, Brisbane wedding venue, etc. Wedding cakes, wedding expo, and you can see there's kind of a huge amount, like a plethora, of um, of words here that you might want to. This is mainly for people that are buying search, but it also can work quite well for optimization to give you ideas for keywords to optimize for. Okay, so those are some of the tools that you can use if you're not sure what keywords you should be um, using to in your site. Um, that will be likely to be searched by people looking for you know your product or venue or uh, company um, you can start to use some of these tools and the main thing is um, you know do do your research and then refine down the list to you know not too many and, and only a couple per page um, and then optimize pages in your site by putting those keywords and keywords related to them into your site when you're writing your copy um, what else okay so this is about checking how your website is going in terms of whether it is optimized well for search. One of the first things you can do if you haven't already is to sign up for Google Webmaster Tools. Um, again, if you've got an Analytics account or an AdWords account or both, um, or a Google Plus page, any of those logins, the Gmail email that you have, will also sign you into Google Webmaster Tools. And you simply um, go to Google Webmaster Tools, sign in, put your, give it your URL, and it will basically generate you a report on your site and um, give you a list of any of the things that need to be fixed with your site to help you to rank better in, in Google search. So this is just mine and I've done that. So no new messages or recent critical issues. Okay, so I've already done it. Um, <clears throat> but if there were things that I could do to my site to fix it up in the code or you know technically, it would give me a report on what I need to do. And you could then take that to your developer and um, they would be able to tweak your site so that it would uh, perform better in Google. So Webmaster Tools, again, like all Google products, it's free. So it's kind of a no brainer to sign up for that. Um, SEM Rush for backlinks you've just seen. If you wanted to check the rank of your page, and this is getting um, into a bit more technical things than you may want to do, but this is sometimes fun to do. Um, Firefox browser, which is this one here, um, does have things called add-ons that again are free um, that you can then download and into your browser and then you can check page rank. For example, I've just put tq.com.au in here and this is my little page rank add-on that I've downloaded. It's given me a page rank of 6 and Alexa rank of 26 
So you can see over time if your page rank is going up or going down, which is kind of kind of a useful thing to do if you have this little add-on in Firefox. And this is where you get it. You can just Google it again, but just go to the Firefox. Oh, it's not going to give it to me. I'll find it here. There we are. So it's just this page here, and it's just called Page Rank Checker. There we are. Okay, so you can just download that, um, and you can use it in Firefox. You browse to a site in Firefox, and it just gives you a little page rank here, which is quite a nifty thing to be able to do. But of course the main thing is, is traffic to your site increasing and, and is your bank balance going up? Those are the real measures of success in your SEO. You can tie yourself up in knots worrying about this keyword and that keyword and other things. But at the end of the day, it's about are you driving traffic to your site that is relevant and if that is converting? Are you earning more money from your efforts is the main thing. And lastly, staying up to date. So, I mean, you know, there are, there are many blogs and sites and people you could subscribe to and things to stay up to date with search engine optimization if you're so inclined. I'm only going to give you one. There are many more. Um, Moz.org have been doing search for a very long time and I usually find um, if something has happened with search engine optimization and someone's ranking has dropped, if I go to Moz, they're normally on top of it and they would normally be able to tell me um, or you know have an article about what's going on with Google and usually some suggestions for dealing with it. So um, I'm only going to recommend that one. There are many more and you might want to try a few and see if, if they're relevant to you. But moz.org is one that I really would um, really would encourage you to have a look at. Even You don't have to sign up, even if there's a particular issue you're interested in. They have a number of articles, heaps and heaps of articles and uh, checklists and advice and all sorts of things. Um, yeah, so you can learn about local search, products, learn, community, they've got blog posts, Getting reviews the right way for local business. How can mobile SEO help my non-mobile or local business? New title tag guidelines, preview tool. When building communities isn't the best way to build links. So all the things I've been talking about today, they will have posts on and advice. And, and they're usually well written. They're usually well researched. Um, so I would definitely recommend that you refer at least to them and to any other blogs that you find useful to stay up to date. So that's about all that I had for you today. Um, hopefully I haven't bamboozled you too much with all this technical stuff, but um, hopefully it's been interesting and informative. If you have a question that you'd like to ask me now, please do feel free to type it into your um, your box there. I'm more than happy to take questions now because we've got just a couple of minutes before we're due to finish. Does anyone have any questions on what we've covered today or anything else to do with SEO? Any burning questions that were not answered that you'd like answered? Nope, resounding silence. <laughs> okay, I'll just carry on with our normal um, our normal slides that we use each webinar to finish with while you're thinking, in case you do think of a question. If you want more information on any of these, we have the Tourism eKit, we have the Big Marketing Guide, the Better Business Guide, the, the TQ Resource Centre. These are all online at the TQ website. So just um, log into, uh, you know, find TQ in your browser and um, these are readily available for you. They're all free. Our next webinar next week is Who's Who in Social Media, so an overview of the major social media platforms, um, the kind of markets they attract, and um, basically just a Social Media 101 for those who are not that familiar with it. That will be me again, and you can register on this link here, tourismte.queensland.com slash digital ready is the link to go to. And we also have a whole series of other webinars that we've just released there, so you might want to have a look <coughs> on this page and just see what else there is that might interest you. Don't forget, Digital Ready program has workshops in region from time to time, so check with your destination specialist when the next workshop is for your area. Either Susan or Mirko will be giving that, and they will also do one-on-one -on -one mentoring sessions with you about anything to do with digital that you might have specific questions on. They can sit with you for an hour and help you along. <coughs>
Um, we also have a coaching service by phone or email. Feel free to ring us or send us a, an email if you have a particular problem related to your situation or want some advice or some help on anything at all digital related, happy to help. And of course the webinars, as I said, every Tuesday at 11, we have a whole new series coming up. So register on te.queensland.com slash digital ready. Yep, these are all the workshops that we have um, from time to time. So you can see there's a huge amount of information here and hopefully one of them will be of interest to you. So contact, as I said, your destination specialist for what's coming up for you in the future. Don't forget our Digital Big Bang Conference, save the date, Monday the 2nd of June 2014. Um, it's going to be an amazing conference with guest speakers from many of the major platforms that we all talk about all the time. Um, really quality presentations and it'll be a great day. So save the date, 2nd of June 2014 and you can book tickets at this URL here. If you need help with that, give us a call. Here we are. Contact us at any time. Here's our phone number, 35355800 or digitalcoach at queensland.com. You can get in touch with us any time. If you have particular issues that you'd like help with, feel free. Okay, question. Okay, so question. You mentioned good local search sites and bad ones. Which are the bad ones? So bad's probably the wrong word, Christina. I mean um, ones that don't have many listings or they're very small or they just look like they've got a lot of advertising on there or, you know, the, the main ones I'd be going for are um, True Local, um, Google Plus Google Places listing, um, Hot Frog, Gumtree, um, maybe Yellow Pages depending on what they're, you know, free and paid models are and I would avoid most other ones unless they're kind of reputable industry ones okay um, ones that are just small and very local and you know the site is not well maintained and it doesn't have fresh content and there aren't a lot of listings those are the ones I would avoid but if you have a specific one you'd like me to look at I'm really happy to do that um, just as a one-on-one -on -one with you if you like if you're worried about one of your listings that you might have don't worry, it's it's not a huge deal. I would just go for the, the major ones that I've just mentioned there rather than um, small ones that may not benefit you in any way. Are there any other questions at all before we finish? No? Okay, well, thanks, everyone. Thanks for sticking with me, and I hope that you found today's session useful and informative. Don't forget, please do get back in touch um, if you have any specific questions on this or anything else that we cover in our webinars. Happy to help. Thanks, everyone, for attending today. Bye-bye.